and then and then you, there's a space in the middle of it that I, so that's, you can see the, so Paul on one side, I'm on side, and we say that with, with Christ in the middle of it, then we can get through everything. And then mm. I love that. That's a nice um, scenario there. Thank you. Sure. And it's so interesting you say that because one of the movie that we're going to be watching together tonight um, talks about that, that the three, um, three chord, you know, which is, the husband, the wife, Christ. So thank you for sharing that. Very good, very good. All right, we're going to have Miss Saskia because she has to go shortly, but she's going to be sharing with us a song tonight. Let's make her welcome. Hi, good night, good night. Big up, big up, big up all the married people, all the 12 years and the 15 years and the ones counting and the ones who got married last year or this year. Congratulations, you have made it thus far with a lot of work, a lot of energy. My baby crying. <laughs> yes, you know, we're we all operating from home. That's so cool. So there are That's times so cool. we have a little hiccups, you know, unplanned hiccups. Um, so I'm hoping she'll settle down shortly so I can get to do my piece. <laughs> uh, Saskia? Just yes. to break you, what I'll do, I'll just pause at this time and pray and then have you sing and then we'll continue. Okay. So let's, let's Wonderful. Let Wonderful. Great. All right. All right. Lovely. I echo the welcome of Dr. Cahoon. And as we are about to begin this part of the program, I invite us now to just be in an attitude for prayer as we pray for God's blessing over this evening's program, over the presentations and certainly over the lives of each of the couples we have here this evening and those who are prospective couples, let us pray. Our loving Father, we thank you so very much for your goodness and your mercies towards us. We thank you for your blessings. You have allowed us to experience your love and because of that, we're able to share love with each other. We pray that you will help us to be even closer to you so that we can be closer to each other. Where it is that we have families who have children, I pray that you'll protect all the way down to children, grandchildren, however, however long persons have been together and however, whatever the size of their families. I pray that you will also take care of the older marriages so that we will be good role models for the younger persons who are coming up. We thank you too for your blessings over um, the Cahoons, and we ask that you'll continue to be with them and their ministry. May you take care of them as man and wife, but also be with Dr. Cahoon in a special way, who in her ministry to reach out and to heal and to take care of others, that she too will take the same care for herself and continue to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We commit this program this evening. We ask now that you will be with the others who will be coming to join. May we all be blessed. May we enjoy bliss and love and continue to grow together in you. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. So Sassy, we're ready for us Amen. now. Bless the Lord. Let's go. Bless the name of Jesus. I'm your queen. You're the king beside me. You're my strength. You are here to guide me. Wanna be a warrior. Break down every barrier with my love as my weapon. I can walk the world without a fear. I can hold my head high without a key. And now I can fight the world, every grudgeful one and every bad minder, with your love as my weapon. Na 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 na, them can't stop the way I feel for you. My love has no boundary. Them can't bully the way I feel I fight for you and you fight for me. Them can't stop the way, them wish and them hope and them fight and them pray. Them can't stop this warrior's love. 
Me loving our heart, it will lead us to joy. We could burn down the wicked with the living fire. And the right of correction will give us direction away from the heathen and blessed with, with children. Them can't stop the way I feel for you. My love has no boundary. Them can't bully the way I feel I fight for you and you fight for me. Them can't stop the way them wish and them hope and them fight and them pray. Them can't stop this warrior's love. Them can't stop the way I feel I fight for you when you fight for me. Them can't stop the way them wish and them fight and them hope and them pray. Them can't stop this warrior's love. Bless the name of Jesus. Let the warrior love that comes from the power and the Holy Spirit of God help you as you battle through your relationship, as you hold on together, as you continue to fight through all the negativity and just to focus on the love, which is the power that will continue to bind you all together in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Saski. That was beautiful. You know, she told me about that song recently and I, it's my first time hearing it and I, I actually love that song. I'm going to be adding that to my collection. Thank you. <laughs> Very beautiful song. I appreciate that. All right, so I have a few more icebreaker questions. So the next question, do you believe in soulmates? And if so, why? Anyone, do you believe in soulmates? Come on, we're here to have fun, guys. Anyone believe in soulmates? What about journey mates? Have you ever heard that one? I was about to ask you, what do you mean by soulmates? Just to clarify, you know, some persons might have a different meaning. Whatever it is to you, if you believe in it. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Doc, come on, Doc. <laughs> huh? No, I have never heard that one. I've never heard of journeymates, but journey mates. mates. Okay, <laughs> okay. So a couple of years ago, I, 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 I've heard, I heard it. I don't remember where, but that's the one I actually... Uh, that resonates with me, journey meets. Because mm -hmm. um, the context in which I heard it um, was that only God alone should have your soul. And in this life, um, you and your partner, your spouse, you're journeying together. So that's your journey meet in this life. So that's the one that I, um, I align with, journey meets. I don't know if anybody else um, has any other perspective regarding that. And if you are soulmate with your husband or wife, what, what is that like? Any thoughts? What is your idea of soulmate if you have a soulmate? You guys are very quiet tonight. I'm going to be calling on people. <laughs> Welcome, Akilia. I see you're on. Not so sure if hubby is on with you as well. Welcome. Would you say that, Achilles? So I'm gonna throw this out. Are you hearing me? Are you there? Or I'm putting you on the spot. Ah, uh, yes, I'm here, but I'm also oh. in another meeting as well. <laughs> okay. So I'm are you able to talk meeting. if I ask you a question? Okay. Would you say you and your husband um, are are soulmates? You say he's your soulmate. Yeah, I would think so. He is. Tell me, tell me a little more why you say that. Um, just a minute, it's for Jody. Um, I think from the moment we met, um, I... give me a minute, though. Sure, no problem.
So others of you can think about it in the meantime and throw out any any comments or feedback. Okay. All right, all right. Sorry about that. That's okay, I see. Go ahead. All right, so I was saying that from the moment we met, um, I, I think I saw him as my best friend, someone that I can share whatever I'm going through with and you won't criticize or judge me for it. And he's someone I always find to be comfortable around at all times. Mm. So from that moment, I realized. That he's your soulmate. Yes. <laughs> Very good. All right. Thank you for sharing. I like that. Best friends. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're muted. You're muted. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, guys. So this is not necessarily about relationship, but in general, who would you play in your li in life if, if, you're, if you were, your life was a movie? Who would you play in a movie about your life? Who would you play in a movie about your life? Anyone? Like, like which movie? Any movie. That genre. Okay. Who, who um, would you be, Simone? I'd be the supporting, supporting actress. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. I think, my, I think my husband would be. I think my husband would be the um the the, the knight in shining armor. Ooh. Okay. Yes. And I, I would help him to star and you know look good. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right. I like that. <laughs> I like that. So you would support him, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yes. Very good. <laughs> All right. Great. All right, guys, that's it for our little icebreaker section. So Simone is going to be doing a brief introduction of who I am. Some of you guys may know me already and others may not. So Simone, you can go ahead and, and share that. Thank you. All right. Hello, everybody. Good evening again. Um, I am pleased this evening to wel wel welcome all of you, yes, but introduce to you in a very special way or host this evening, Dr. Kahoon, Dr. Sharifa Kahoon. She is a special woman and you'll learn in a moment why it is that I'm saying she is very special. The Dr. Sharifa Wilkins Kahoon is a family psycholo psychologist with specialties in marriage and family therapy and mental health counseling. She earned a PhD in marriage family and family therapy from the Nova Southeastern University a Master of Science degree in Counseling Psychology with specialties in mental health counseling and marriage and family therapy from Palm Beach Atlantic University, and a Bachelor of Arts degree in mass communication from the Northern Caribbean University. So clearly she has extensively read and clearly very brilliant woman. But can I tell you, she has gone ahead to connect with everybody here in Jamaica and where she has studied. So she's licensed both in Florida and in Jamaica. She has served as, as young as she looks, she has served for over 14 years providing assessment and psychotherapy services for a wide variety of clients who are experiencing emotional, mental and behavioral problems in the USA and Jamaica. She has currently a vibrant private practice at Howells Medical Complex in Mandeville but guess what? She is not just stuck in Manchester. She is available online and face-to-face. -face. So whether you're here in Jamaica or overseas, you can make contact with her and we'll share some more contact details with you later on. She provides psychotherapy through the Employee Assistance Program for Family Life Ministries Jamaica, Rise Life Management and Essential Medical wow. Services. And she also lectures across local universities in Jamaica and is an accredited assessor with the University Council of Jamaica. She presents at seminars, conferences, workshops, and speaks at a variety, on a, in a variety of contexts on issues related to mental health, relationships, singleness, family life, and spiritual growth. She is all of that, but she's also an author of 
secrets of relationships, the principles for unleashing your full potential, and from terror to triumph, unfolding the stories of migration. Furthermore, she has published her research in the International Humanities Review Journal. Wow, volume eight, entitled Serial Migration and the Caribbean Parent-Child Relationship, a phenom phenomenological study. Wow, tell you, big words because she has a big heart. She loves God. She loves to interact with the media. She volunteers. She loves watching movies. Hello, that's why we're here tonight, traveling and spending time with her lovely husband, Dwayne, and her happy and energetic, curious, four-year-old son. She accepted Christ as her Lord and Savior over 25 years ago and continues to live out her purpose, found in Isaiah 61, 1 to 3. And I'll tell you, before the night is over, take a look at that verse because Jesus himself came and repeated those verses. It is my privilege, my delight to welcome, to introduce to you and to ask her to share at this time. Please help me make welcome Dr. Sharifa Wilkins Kogum. Clap, clap, where are the, where are the reactions and emotions? Yes, I see one, I see two. There we go, welcome. Well, a little bit more about me. Uh, that's very extensive. A lot of people would not probably know all of that. So thank you, Simone. Thank you guys for the opportunity to be here with me, to spend the night with me. And of course, February is Lover's Month. And, and um, Valentine's is right around the corner. So I wanted to do my little bit to help to, to add to, you know, preserving marriages, relationships, enhancing them um, as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. So I'm going to be sharing my screen and I'm going to be sharing some family therapy concepts um, that is relating to a movie that we're going to be watching right after this, this. So I'm not going to be going through all the concepts, just a few important ones um, that I think is important for us to know. There's a knowledge is power, right? And indeed, um, a lot of times we go through things and we don't even understand what we're going through. We don't understand the processes and we don't make the connection and know how to deal with certain things. And as a couples therapist, in addition to everything else that I do, um, I've been coming up on a lot of these concepts in my practice with couples, working with families. And I just wanted to bring to light um, some of these concepts, how timely, right? Right around Valentine's to be doing this. You guys are seeing my screen, correct? Yes? Yes, we are. Okay, great. So the movie, I don't know how many of you guys have probably watched the movie, Not Easily Broken, but that's the movie. And I'm going to be exploring um, these concepts. Family strengths, what a healthy family look like. I'm going to be talking about subsystems. I'm going to be talking about what enmeshment is. Also disengagement and triangulation. Some new words, right? For those of us who are in the field, especially if you're in family therapy, you probably will hear these concepts quite a bit. So I'm just going to be bringing to you know an enlightenment um, to um, to understand these concepts um, a little bit more. So based on extensive research, um, it has been concluded that there are certain qualities of strong families, and the first concept or strength is commitment. Earlier, I heard Raquel shared about commitment. Um, and that is what kept her and her husband for 15 years. Without commitment, truly a relationship, a marriage will not last because there's always gonna be something to pull you apart, always gonna be some roadblock. But once you have that commitment, it will stand the test of time, all right? And so it's important to understand that commitment is important. And I think that is what is lacking in a lot of relationships, a lot of marriages these days. People are not committed. Um, and of course, you know, we understand that commitment comes with certain, what should I say, conditions. Because for example, if you're in, in an abusive relationship, you're not going to sit down and say, oh, I'm committed to this man for him to kill me, right? So we understand that commitment comes into certain contexts. Also, spiritual well-being. Research has shown that couples who have similar faith or spiritual belief has, have stronger marriages, yes. So it's important to have a strong faith 
And I'm not here to promote a specific faith, whatever your faith is, it's important that you have a strong foundation, whatever that is. And it's also important that we practice spiritual intimacy because as much as how intimacy is physical and sexual, it is also spiritual. So whatever you believe, make sure that as a unit, you're practicing together, okay? It's also important that you look out for your partner's um, needs and to ensure that you're making an effort to speak the person's love language and to meet the person's need. One of the things that I have realized over the 15 years of practicing is that people leave a relationship because they're not feeling loved or their needs are not being met. And so it's important that we make an effort to speak each other's love language. It's very important. Also, successful management of stress and crisis so important that's what helps um, to have strong marriages and strong relationships because stress is a part of life we have you stress which is good stress and you're going to have distress which is bad stress stress is inevitable and so having good stress management skills how to manage crisis because crises are going to come right whether it be a, a miscarriage whether it be infertility whether it be infidelity whatever it is it's so important that um, we, 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 um, sorry, my son. So, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> um, it's so important that we learn ways to manage our emotions and to manage stresses as they come. And it's also important for us to learn how to soothe um, ourselves as well. Another strength is time together. It's very important to spend time together. I think that there's so much distraction around us that we neglect that it's important to spend time without the phone, without the television, without the distraction, but to spend quality time with our family. And it's so important, uh, just even having a family meal, it's important. Those are just values and rituals that strong families um, you know, do, right? have meals together, family meals, sit around the table, have a, um, a family night, watch a movie together, play together, talk together. It's so important that we spend time together. And I, I know we are busy people, but it's so important for us to balance and balance well, because marriage and family should be our first ministry. Anything else comes after. Also appreciation and affection. I think it's so important um, for us to express to our family and friends how we feel about them, let them know. And as I said, um, as I have here, strong families care deeply for one another and they let each other know this on a regular basis. But there is some words of affirmation. There may be some hugging, you know, some physical touch and that should be done openly. And it's so important that we show appreciation in terms of even saying it. You know, sometimes I think husbands and wives um, take each other for granted. You've been married for 20 years or 10 years. You feel like, oh, I should not say thank you if your spouse give you something or do something for you. Even after having sex or a sexual exchange, you could say thank you to each other for that because that, that, that was something that you both enjoyed. So just little, is the little things, you know, guys, that counts. So it's important for us to show appreciation and affection. And of course, we all know that communication is important. So positive communication is key as well because you can't have a relationship without communication, right? And we know that communication is not just verbal, it's also nonverbal. And so it's important your body language when you're speaking to the person that you're giving some sort of eye contact and you're allowing yourself to communicate effectively, because sometimes we communicate, but it's not so effective. And so it's important that you allow your partner to speak, you listen, then you know you allow yourself to speak and your partner listen. So the respect should be reciprocated as well. All right, so those are some tips um, for positive um, or strong families. 
and you can feel free to, to ask questions or raise your hands or put some comments in the, in the, in the chat as well. So the next um, concept that I want to talk about is subsystems. And these are defined by boundaries, which indicate that each subsystem is distinct from the larger system, as well as from that of other subsystems, while still recognizing their interrelatedness. So for example, myself, my husband, my son, my daughter, let's say like that, right? That would be a family. That would be a system, the family system. But a subsystem would be myself and my husband, the husband and wife, right? And you also have my son and my daughter. That's a sibling subsystem. And, or you could have also a subsystem of a parent child, mother and child, father and child, all right? So those are subsystems, but we are all what? Interrelated and connecting with each other. And in the movie, we will see some of these systems and it's important that we are mindful of these systems and our roles, all right? What role we play. The next um, concept is M enmeshment. And I actually see this quite a bit in our, in our society, especially when I work with um, Caribbean, um, Jamaican in particular couples, I see a lot of enmeshment and I'm gonna explain a little bit more. It says this concept in psychology and psycho psychotherapy is used to describe families where personal boundaries are diffused, subsystems are undifferentiated and over concern for others that may lead to a loss of autonomous development. So all the subsystems are enmeshed. There is no real rigidity or no separation. That's why it says it's undifferentiated. They are diffused, right? And when that happens, there's no autonomy. There's no sense of self. And I see this happens all the time with dysfunctional families and couples. So enmeshment can also be used to describe a state of cross-generational bonding within a family, whereby, for example, a child of the opposite sex usually becomes a surrogate spouse for their mother or father. And this is very unhealthy, but I don't know if you've ever heard it. And sometimes I hear, even I think sometimes I hear my husband say, um, you know, two husband you have, <laughs> you know, because my son is so close to me and most night guys, he will not allow me to sleep with my husband. He will come for me and say, mommy, come in my bed. Yes. So that's a kind of enmeshment. All right. But um, when, when, when it becomes dysfunctional is when it's, it's, it's crossing the boundaries. There's no clear boundaries and the people are not acting in their roles as it was intended, all right, to have a functional family. Um, I see it a lot too. For example, if, if, if a mother has a, has a son and the, 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 the spouse died, it's, it's like the, the son becomes the husband, you know, um, taking care of the mother and feels as if it's his responsibility to take care of the mother. And sometimes that son may have his family and has not left his family, right? And the Bible says we're supposed to leave and cleave. And that is a very real concept. And in the movie, we will see this play out and how that enmeshment between the daughter and the mother caused issue with this couple system that we're gonna be seeing later on. And we see it in so many different ways. All right, so that's what enmeshment is. And it, it can be very, very unhealthy. Of course, it's good to be close, but you should not be overly close. Right? So ways in which you can treat enmeshment is by setting boundaries. I oftentimes say that Jamaicans have no boundaries. And we see it even playing out, not just physically. We, we see it physical where everybody, animal, go your property, right? Your, them dog, if there's, instead of locking up their dog, their dog is all, all over the place on the road right? Biting people. So you see poor boundaries in the physical sense, but we also see poor boundaries in the mental and emotional sense where people don't know their place, right? Where you have mother-in-laws, you know, in their son's marriage, yes, or vice versa, right? 
even um, in their daughter's marriage and there's no boundaries, there's no leaving and cleaving and cleaving to your own. There is so much enmeshment which is unhealthy. So it's important that we set certain boundaries. It's important that we learn to be assertive. Even sometimes I see couples and they get the children involved. We have to be careful of that. You never vent about your spouse to your child. You know, you don't triangulate. And I'm going to talk about triangulate, but it's not healthy um, to bring in the children in it because at the end of the day, you're asking the children to choose, right? And it's their mommy, it's their daddy. So you're putting them in a very awkward position. So it's very important that we maintain those proper boundaries. And, and Dr. Salvador Minuchin, he is a well-renowned family therapist. God bless his soul. May his soul rest in peace. He died a couple of years ago. He talked a lot about boundaries in the family system and rearranging the family system. So even in therapy, sometimes when you, you see they come in, the, the, the couples come in with the children, instead of having the, the husband and the wife sitting together, you have the children in between separating them. A lot of couples have their big children, 12 and 13 year old, still sleeping in, in their marital bed, yes, in between them. That can be a problem. And he's all about rearranging that, you know, to ensure that the system, the subsystems are being protected and that each person is operating in his or her role. Also, it's very important that we discover who we are. And if you know who you are, you will know your role in the family system. You will know your role as a mother, as a father, as a mother-in-law, as a father-in-law, as a husband, as a wife. You know what your responsibilities are and you're operating in such. So it's very important that we understand our roles. Also, stop feeling guilty. I've seen all the time where adult children want to move out, go on their own, but they feel guilty for leaving their mom or leaving their, their dad. We have to be mindful of guilt because guilt is one of those things that can be easily confused. Like I explained to people that we have true guilt and we have false guilt. It's very important for us to know the difference between the two. So true guilt is when you would have done something wrong, right? And you know you need to repent and turn away from your action. That is true guilt. But false guilt is where you, you hold on to something and it brings about condemnation. And if you're trying to set boundaries and become differentiated from your family of origin, there is no reason why you should feel guilty. So you need to stop feeling guilty for doing that, for wanting to be an autonomous being. That's what we were created to be. After a while, we're expected to leave our families, our parents, our children, and allow them to, to, to go out and experience life on their own. And if you're having problems with enmeshment, I would say get support. And that's why a family therapist like myself would be able to assist, especially um, those who are trained systemically in systems family therapy, because not all psychologists or, or therapists understand how to treat these things. But some people who are specifically trained in family system will be able to assist with treating enmeshment in the family or the couple's unit, all right? So enough of for that. Um, as I said, feel free to, to ask questions or, or, or send a comment as well. Um, also, we have what we call disengagement. And we're going to see this in the movie again with the husband feeling disengaged because his wife and um, her mother has, are so enmeshed and so dysfunctional, right? That he, there's a dis disengagement that comes and he feels like an outsider. So disengagement is a temporary withdrawal strategy that individuals make use of when they feel treated negatively on the basis of certain criteria, such as their role in the family, for example. And I could see with this young man, there was a, there was, there was a intentional withdrawal because of how he felt, because he was being treated negatively, you know, because of his role in the system and all of that. Also, you know, clearly it's, a, it's an act of drawing from attachment. And this is so dysfunctional because we're the, the subsystem of the husband and the wife should be strong, right? And closely bonded, we see an attachment, a, a detachment. So there's a withdrawal because again, all the other issues in the, with the other subsystem that, that, that comes in, all right? 
Um, so it, it can happen in, in pretty much any relationship, not just husband and wife relationship. Even at work, you, there can be engage, disengagement between uh, co-workers, right? And you may see that. It is also very similar to stonewalling, um, which stonewalling is becoming very withdrawn and distant and, and icy cold. And the connection and the communication is very monosyllable. You know, it's, it's not like any deep interaction. How are you doing? Fine, how was your day? It's okay, and that's it. You know, it kind of icy cold and, and distant, not much communication, not much connection and bond. And based on research by Dr. John Gottman, which is a marriage researcher, he said that stonewalling is a very strong predictor um, of divorce. And we see it happens a lot. I mean, I understand that couples go through different seasons, like summer, winter, spring and fall, right? And when a couple is going through a winter season, there may be some stonewalling, but it should not be for extended period of time. Even if there's some, some stonewalling, it probably would be more on the, ver the basis of, let's say, processing, sitting down and thinking through things and how you're going to respond and how you're going to communicate when you come back together. All right, but stonewalling, constant stonewalling is a very strong predictor um, for divorce. And I see it happens a lot. And this passive aggression too, and it's not healthy. So it's, it's very important that we're all aware of these concepts and that we're not doing them. You know, you may find yourself doing it, but you stop and evaluate and you interrupt the pattern. If you have a hard time doing that and you need help, I'm here, right? Family therapists are here to assist. All um, ways in which you can you can help to treat disengagement, uh, just really speak to your partner openly and calmly about what is happening, what you, what you feel, you know, without blaming. Let them know how the disengagement affects you, because sometimes people become disengaged and they may not even be mindful or aware that they're disengaged. And so, open communication is key. And you realize the word calmly. A soft answer turn it away wrath, but reverse words what? Right, tears of anger. So it's very important that we watch our approach as well. It's a work in progress for a lot of us, right? Right. Also, also ask for their, their engagement. Communicate what you need. And if really and truly you don't want the relationship, just be honest about it. Also, Build a culture of appreciation and respect. And I talked about that earlier. It is so important that we appreciate and we respect our partners. That can help a long way because if a person feel appreciated and valued and respected, they're going to want to engage with us, right? But if, they're, if they feel disrespected, especially men, if they feel disrespected, they're not going to want to interact and to, to communicate with us. Yes, Raquel. You have your hands up, Raquel. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Yes, I just wanted to add to your point that you made about you know the building a culture of appreciation and respect. You know, you made a point earlier that you know it's okay it's important to say thank you you know for, for you know providing a meal or providing good sex or you know or um or just for for taking the the, the the salary in and paying the bills you know some people think that oh no why should i be saying thank you for that <laughs> that's what you're expected to do exactly. you know but but of course we know the value of of saying thank you we know the value of expressing appreciation so when you made the point you know, build a culture of appreciation, appreciation and, and respect. For some people, it's it, it, it you have to practice it. You have to make a deliberate effort. Mm -hmm. to make a deliberate effort to do it. You know, to say thank you, or like you said earlier, to give a hug. Or I appreciate you. And and one of the points, something that's that is a big thing for me, that you know, in in our in homes with children. We should be modeling the right things for our children so that we can build that legacy, you know, that even we when even when we were growing up, we might, it might have been different for us, but we are also making making um, 
building a legacy, leaving a mm -hmm. legacy for our children and for the future. So that when they see us doing these, these great things, you know, saying thank you, you know, giving a pat on the shoulder, giving a hug, or just a touch of a, a, some showing, showing some affection, it makes a big difference. And so I'm definitely endorsing that point you made earlier. Yes, yes, indeed. Thank you. Sure. Very good, very good. All right, let me continue sharing. And you know, I think I think sometimes we really take for granted or, or each other or spouses, you know, because it's my spouse, right? You're not gonna leave, and that's that's a mistake that a lot of people make. And then out of the blue, years later or after they become empty nesters, they find that one partner wants for divorce. Why? Because there was not a culture of appreciation and respect that was fostered over the years, and it's so important so important guys and again we're not perfect all of this is a work in progress but there should be some conversation about it and there should be some intentionality as well also we need to be able to accept bids for connection and i think sometimes you know our partners give us clue that they want to connect and we re we reject it and, and we refuse to accept those bids. And it's so important because that is one of the things that is showing the person that, oh, I want, I want to be connected. Like for example, a wife may say, um, I want to spend some quality time with you. You know, can you know, okay, that that's right there, that's a bid right there that she wants to connect. Or she may say something, or he may say something, you know, sexy or something like that, or give you a slap on the butt, right? While they're cooking dinner. That may be a, a, a little bit right there for connection that maybe he wants sex or she wants sex. And so it's important because these things, again, can cause disengagement. Sometimes we push away our partners and we don't even realize that we're doing it. So we need to be mindful. Um, also, love is not built on the big vacations or expensive gifts. Hear that, guys? It's the small things. Often, it is the seemingly insignificant moments of connection that are the most significant of all. Yes, small things. It's not the big things. It's the small things. Like just saying thank you. Thank you for, for making the meal. The meal looks, um, was delicious. You look pretty. You know, just little things. Thank you. I mean, the sex was good. Thank you. Little things. All right. So important. Another concept, triangulation. Yes. So just think of a, of a triangle. A triangle has what? Three sides, right? So triangulation is a system process in which the child becomes involved in the parents' conflictual interactions by taking sides distracting parents and carrying messages in order to avoid or minimize conflict between parents. And I see this all the time and it is not good. And I mentioned, um, I mentioned that earlier when I was talking about enmeshment. So oftentimes when you find enmeshed families or subsystems, oftentimes there's some triangulation going on and the kids are caught in the middle. And I find this happen a lot with families that are divorced parents that are divorced, sorry, or, or those who are doing co-parenting or separated and they can't stand each other. Even yesterday, I think, yes, yesterday, yes, yes, yesterday I had a, I had a, um, a couple in my office. I mean, they were separated and they have a child and I realized the tension and I had to say to them, listen, you guys have to become positive co-parents because you guys have something in common. While you may not love each other anymore, you love the child. And he is the business. So you want to treat each other with this respect. There has to be some communication um, as well. So this is very important. So triangulation can happen in nearly any type of relationship, not just couple relationship or families. Triangulation occurs when an outside person, sorry, intervenes or is drawn into a conflict. Give me a second. or is drawn into a conflicted or stressful relationship in an, in an attempt to ease tension and to facilitate communication. So even at work, you have some issue with your boss. Instead of speaking directly to your boss, you go gossip with another coworker about your boss, right? And this happens a lot. And we see a lot of this in the family therapy. 
And when conflict occurs in a relationship, a third party can be a helpful source of new ideas and advice, as a diet can often become unstable when they face stress. And sometimes you just want to, to, to relieve some of that anxiety. Not true. Right. But bringing a third person into a two-person relationship can be sometimes beneficial for the couple who may need help in mediating disagreements, gaining a fresh perspective, or finding supports in times of frustration. All right? So that's the benefit of triangulation. However, it can also be taxing and stressful. And it can be stressful to individuals who are thrust in the middle of a conflict. I don't know if that has ever happened to you, but clearly as a therapist, that happens to me all the time. <laughs> But guess what? That's good because what? I'm a professional, right? And I'm trained to be neutral, to be unbiased, right? Yeah. So having a third party like myself or a pastor or a mediator who is capable, yeah, and is not going to give bad advice, advice or recommendation, then, you know, um, that can be helpful. So this stress can also lead us the third party to play an inappropriate or harmful role, whether knowingly or unknowingly in a relationship. So I see this happens a lot. Um, and I, this is something I, I discourage in, in marriage. You have issues. Instead of going to a couple's therapist or a family therapist, you go gossip to your mom about your husband. Or you gossip to your mom about your wife or another family member. You see how that you see how that look, right? And then what? Because they are your mom or sister, or whoever, they're gonna take side, right? So that's where it can cause problems. So triangulation can also cause people in a relationship to avoid addressing problems. So when triangulation persists or lead, leads to increased stress it can often be helpful to find a qualified therapist or counselor and explore possible causes of the conflict. And I find that these are ingrained patterns in family systems. Even in my family, I see that a lot. Instead of talking directly to the person, you go talk to one ex-sister about it or something like that, you know? And that's something that I am intentional not to do because I know what it can do. Triangulation is also a term that is used in family systems therapy that help members of the couples and families understand the interconnected roles and patterns that function in relationships. So once again, in an attempt to do something good can cause harm, right? In trying to remedy the situation can make it worse. So hopefully we are mindful of these patterns, right? in our daily lives as we go out and go on day to day in our families, in our marriages. Let's be, a, let's be mindful um, of these concepts. I am of the notion that if you don't know something, you can change. But once you know, you can make changes. And I have enlightened us this evening. So it's for us to definitely do what we need to do to end these dysfunctional dysfunctional relationships, to preserve our relationships, our marriages, or, and to have healthier families. Because we know in general that healthy marriages, healthy families, we have a healthy world, right? I, I, I strongly believe that some of the root of the crime and the problems that we're having, the truancy and the drug problem, and the, as I said, crime, we're having problems we're having in our culture and in, in, in the world in general is because of broken families, dysfunctional, unhealthy families. So families who enter therapy will, more be, will, will likely be able to learn to identify triangulation and other negative patterns in order to better understand them and how to deal with the relationships directly on their own rather than relying on an outside um, person to help, all right? So over time, you should be able to interrupt these patterns and you should know what to do. But again, it do take some help. And again, we all need a little help sometimes. I know sometimes we're of the notion that I should not go and talk to anybody because I'm not crazy. Or people will say, oh, they don't need to see a shrink. But the benefits are there of seeing a shrink. <laughs> so 
if you need help, get it. The Bible says, whenever you need something, you, you knock. Knock and the door will be open. Ask and you shall be given. And so nothing is wrong with, with seeking mental health um, help, um, family, family therapy help. Um, that's why professionals like myself exist. So I just want to help to destigmatize um, mental health issues, these issues, because again, they're real issues and they affect us because we all know that the quality of our relationships impacts the quality of our lives, right? And so it's important that we have healthy um, relationships, foster those healthy relationships. So I just want to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to share. And um, my flyer is here. You can take my contact information as well. We can throw it out in the chat. Feel free to share. I know you may, be, you may know a family member or a couple or a friend, somebody who may need some assistance. So feel free to reach out and, and share. And we're going to be going into our movie shortly. But any, any final thoughts or feedback or questions before we go into the movie? Thank you, guys. Great. Thank you, Dr. Cahoon. Thank you so very much. And I'm sure all of the applauses are going up right now, right? I don't see them yet. I don't see the reactions. I, I was certainly, thank you, Kenisha, and welcome. I was certainly blown away by the different concepts that you know we're about to experience in this movie coming up. But I'd like to put a little punch in as it relates to the fact that this week is Valentine's week. And so in the week of February 14th to 25th, you can, as a couple or individually, personally, yes, check in with Dr. Cahoon because she's having some wonderful specials one and a half hours, 7,000 Jamaican dollars. And remember, not only in Jamaica, she also will speak with those persons who are overseas. It's just a hundred US. You can't get those prices in the US. So please tell your family and friends. And then if you want to go for two hours, 9,000 Jamaican dollars or 130 US dollars. Guys, I don't want all of us, any of us to miss this opportunity at all. So give her a call, 876-438. 2956. Give her a call, give her assistant a call, and make the appointment. This is going to be one of the best Valentine's presents that you can ever give to your partner, to your spouse. Get on board and save your relationship. Make sure it's not just for now, but for eternity. Because as I told you earlier, she also does the spiritual growth side of her ministry. So Thank you, Doc. That's my plug. And that's what I wanted to comment on and share this evening. Thank you, Simone. That means a lot. I appreciate that. Thank you. Any other question or comment, guys? So I'm sure that these are new concepts for you guys, right? But you probably can relate to them in your, in your interactions, your relationships with others. I think we all have them in our lives. <laughs> all right. Uh, Doc, if you'd be so kind as to just put up at that first slide, I think, which has this summary concepts on it, so that we can okay. be reminded as, as to the topics. Sure. So we have family strengths. I'm going to put it up. We have subsystems. We have enmeshment, disengagement, and triangulation. And these are very big. We see them all the time with our interactions with others. So as we watch the movie, we will see the, all these concepts play out. And I'm sure there are others that I didn't focus on tonight. All right. Any other questions, comments, guys? Hope you guys are learning or would have learned something tonight. <laughs> all right. Okay. So I'm gonna share the movie. All right, so guys, enjoy, all right? I'm gonna share my screen and change position for a moment. You can indicate and let me know if you're hearing or seeing. We're seeing. Okay, good. 